Hello everyone, welcome to my series on A2019 programming and today we are going to discuss interactive forms in A2019. Now, interactive forms are a very nice way of uh, uh, saying that in attended mode when the bot needs some kind of user information, it provides a screen to the user uh, asking for those user actions which cannot be automated. So if there is a human judgment uh, that is required, if there is a human decision that needs to be made, taken, in that case, we use interactive forms in attended automation and that causes a pause in the execution and prompts a screen to the user and it can show details about the bot execution results, it can ask for approval, it can ask for uh, the next step of action, uh, things like that. So today we are going to discuss how a basic form works and how a bot can be integrated with a form. So if you see, I have created a in my uh, I have opened two tabs uh, one tab is for the bot and one tab is for the form so if I just close this form and go back to my my bot screen you can see this uh, button over here that takes care of creating a form right beside the button which takes care of creating the bot so let me just open the form once again so the first time you open the form it comes this is the default view so the form consists of multiple layers you can add uh, rows uh, as many rows as possible now each row can be divided into multiple sections so by default it comes in two sections if you click on the row it says it equally divided by 50% 50% now you can increase that and make four sections each of 25% and that's the max that it can divide a particular row into so a row can be divided into max four columns so let's just go with uh, a single section on each row let me just delete this these rows Okay, now on the left side you can see the toolbox where you can see the common uh, controls that you can add on the form. Let me just add a text box. So since uh, we considered a single column row, the text box occupied the entire uh, row. But now if I click on the row and add one more section, you can see that the text box just occupies the half of the form and the remaining is still empty for one more control to be added. So this is how the sections work. Let me just delete this. Okay, this is our text box. Now we click on the text box and we get the <coughs> details over here. Let me just uh, modify this. And <coughs> let me just put a sample label over here. Let's say approved by, and it's a standard formatting. You can provide a hint over here. You can provide a tooltip text over here for the user's benefit. Let me just provide a hint. Provide approver name so you can see the hint comes right here and similarly you can provide a tooltip text over here so the user points his mouse and the tooltip appears you can make this fill required and let's say we save the data now let me add one more row below this and once again okay so let me just keep two sections over here and i'll bring two buttons this is the first button and the second button now this button let's say is cancelled and this button is approved. Let me just change the look and feel of the buttons. I'll say this button is secondary and this is the primary button. Okay. Now our basic form design is ready. Let me just reduce the size of the form. Okay, done. So our basic form design is ready. We have a simple form which when prompted to the user, user will provide the name of the person who's approving and then whether or not he's approving this uh, transaction or record or whatever it is, or he's canceling this record. Let me just go back to the bot and see how we can integrate this with this form. I'll save this and go back to my bot. Now this is a typical bot. I'll just add a try catch over here first thing. We'll discuss error handling in detail in my uh, future videos. But uh, as of now, all the actions that we need uh, where the error needs to be handled, we put it inside the try block and the catch takes care of how to react when an unexpected error happens. So that's what the catch block is for. So let me just uh, search for interactive forms. So interactive forms package is the entire list of uh, commands that we can use on a form. Let's start with the display command. Now display command says choose a variable. So as of now we have not created a variable. We need to create a variable of type form and point it to that form that we created and then choose the variable here. So let's start with that, create a variable and set the data type as uh, form name the variable as frm form1 and the default value needs to be set so our default value is we navigate to our folder and choose our form 
confirm create so now we can select this variable over here always display the form window in front so that's just to keep the form window always in the front so we select that and save it so now our form display is done now as soon as the form is displays as soon as the form is displayed uh, we need to keep the form alive in front of the user until the user performs the required action so in that case we have to keep a trigger loop so the purpose of a trigger loop here is to keep looping so the form will remain active on the screen in front of the user uh, and the bot execution will basically halt here it will keep looping this until the user provides the action that we want the user to pro you know, perform for example a trigger loop has a handle this handle is basically the action that we want the user to perform so we choose a form trigger in the handle not the loop in the handle we choose a form trigger and we choose our form variable we choose an element of the form so you can see our submit and cancel buttons are right here so let's say i select cancel over here and action is clicked so the moment the clicked action happens we can ask the loop to break so that's how the form will basically the loop will end and we can decide the next step of action for this form we can ask for the form to be closed okay let's see how that works i'll just save this and run this okay what did i do oh for close you need to select the form variable sorry and run okay so now the form is loaded and if you see the approved by text box has come with two buttons now if i type anything on the text box it doesn't trigger any event on the form if i click on the approved button it doesn't trigger any event on the form apart from the fact that it says approved by is a mandatory field but if i hit the cancel button the form closes and the bot execution stops because we have already provided a trigger loop handle when button zero is clicked and button zero is our cancel button and in that handle we are all we are doing is a loop break and then we are closing the form so that's how trigger loop works the loop keeps running until any of the events inside the handles are done so let me so as of now i have added just for cancel event uh, sorry cancel button click let me just add one more handle here for submit button or the approved button uh, okay so let me go back to my form this is approved why does it say submit over here let me just close this and open this again okay so it got refreshed okay so if you're making any changes to the form you need to close the bot and open it again for the form changes to get refreshed so basically if uh, you're already using a button which is uh, a different text and you modify the text of the button so it's better to close the bot and open it again to refresh the reference okay so let's just add a trigger handle so we're just inside the same trigger loop we're just adding one uh, adding one more handle for this approved button now so it's again a form trigger we choose our form variable we choose the form control which is approved and we choose the action is clicked now when this action happens what do we do so we have a text box in the form let's store the value of the text box in a variable and then kill the form so that's all we need we we know that it's approved uh, all we need is the approved by field to be stored in a variable and then use it in our further processing so let's do that so the first thing we'll do is we'll do a interactive forms get action so get action is used to get the value of any of the form fields so we choose the form variable which choose the form element which is text box and then we set the variable value to prompt assignment and then we can easily do a trigger loop break now trigger loop break is different than normal loop break you cannot just add a normal loop break here we need to add a trigger loop break for a trigger loop okay so we have our variable and we have put the break now we close this form is again anyway getting closed after this is done our bot processing starts so here we can just put a if condition and check for a string condition for the variable prompt assignment and if it is equal to blank or not if it is blank it means that the user has clicked the cancel button so let me just put a message box I'll just type cancelled okay let me go back and search for else condition 
click on the yes if condition over here and double click on the else it automatically comes here now here just copy the message box click on the else paste it inside this and I'll just type approved so in case of a submit we are capturing the value of the text so if the value is blank it will never get submitted so it has there has to be a value we made the field mandatory so let's do that let's try that now save it and run so now if I put the approver name or approved by field as let's say John Miller and say approved it says approved we can also also join the you know um, variable prompt assignment with this saying approved by John Miller or something like that so basically that's the concept we display the form and we start a loop because the form needs to be active in front of the user and then we decide the different different actions which can trigger events in the form and in some events we can choose to close the form in some events we can choose to you know repopulate some other value in the form something like that okay let me just try something else now so we already have this uh, text box over here let me just add a row below and keep that row as a single column and in this row let me just add a checkbox now if you see this comes as a checkbox group so let me just rename the label of the group saying select your favorite Avenger something like that and uh, we can see that inside the same checkbox group I can add multiple checkboxes let me just add two more I put this as Iron Man I put this as Thor and I put this as Hulk okay once again make the field required formatting uh, let's make it horizontal so it'll come in a lesser space in the form let me just increase the size a little bit more okay nice okay so we click on the approved button validate all form fields when this button is clicked save it and let's go back to our bot so now we if I go to the form element okay so let me just close this bot and come back again So now you see the checkboxes have come. Okay, so now when the submit is hit, we get the value of the text box in prompt assignment that's already happening. Along with that, let me just get the values of the text checkboxes as well. So once again, we go to interactive forms and we do a get. And we choose the form, we choose the element, which is the Iron Man checkbox. The value gets set in a Boolean type variable. let's say bool iron man default value is false and we select this in the same way we do for the other two checkboxes so this is the third checkbox and we create a variable saying this save it and this is the hulk checkbox we create this save it okay so now we have taken the values of all the checkboxes as well with us what happens now when we click on submit so form closes and then let's say our condition is if prompt assignment equal to this then cancel else uh, it's approved so let's do something inside this else so let me just go with if command we put a message box inside that message box we put a if condition saying if a boolean condition so our variable we check for the variable if if iron man is selected if iron man is true then it should say approved and avenger is iron man otherwise there should not be any message the form should just close let's see how that works save it and let's understand this I hope there is no error oh 
okay so now we again put the approved by as let's say john miller and we say iron man and we say approved approved in the avengers iron man okay this is as expected now we run this again we put the approver as john and this time we select thor and we click on approved and we don't get any message box so this work is working perfectly fine exactly the way it's supposed to work uh, this handles are taking care of getting each of the values and populating the respective boolean variables and our part is just checking the conditions accordingly now this is how the normal interactive forms work so let me just show you one more interesting part before uh, we come to the end of the video uh, this is a, a dynamic entry basically so something that can be useful for anyone who is trying to add controls programmatically so let me just add a row below and delete all the end delete keep just only one column and add a dynamic area in that row now within the dynamic area we don't drag any controls here but using our programming logic we can put controls dynamically let's see how that works we save the form and just to refresh the reference we close the bot and we open the bot again okay so now <coughs> if uh, an approval name is given so prompt assignment is not blank and if iron man is true in that case we want a text box to come under the dynamic entry so let's say interactive form get sorry interactive form there is a separate section called dynamic area so in that we say add row in dynamic area so first we give the message box and then we add a new row in that form in that dynamic area control and the element in that new that new control is basically a text box the label says uh, uh, let's say uh, real name make the field required of course and we add it okay so a real name text box comes now once this comes we want the bot not okay so we cannot close the form as of now so what we do is we close the form only it's if the cancel is clicked but if the submit is clicked we don't close the form we come all the way till here and add row in dynamic area and then oh well, let me just check how this works okay uh, we don't close the form at all. Let me just see how the control is getting added dynamically. Uh, let me run this. Okay, so I did not exactly size the form properly, but there is a scroll bar which came automatically. And this is the dynamic control area. Now we do the usual, we put some name over here, we select a value over here and then we click on approved. First we get our message box, close this message box and see this is the text box that is creating dynamically. And of course the bot has ended because we did not put in a loop. But you get the point. So what we need to do here is once uh, we, if we have some further actions, we again drag and drop a trigger uh, loop over here and then choose the action that we need to do. Maybe we create third button. On the click of the button, we can close the form, something like that. But the whole idea of a dynamic uh, uh, control is uh, programmatically based on the number of records we can choose our controls so let's say we're processing a bunch of records or a bunch of transactions that need to be approved uh, we can add the controls for that transactions one by one uh, in this dynamic control by using a loop so that's how we use dynamic control so this is how we are using the interactive forms control in a2019 i have shown you three very basic controls that are used please go through the remaining ones if you have any doubts if you have any questions just Post it in the comments and I'll help you out with the video. Thank you so much.